fast, accurate, and every day. First Defense Weather. Well, a happy Tuesday to you. And those rainfall totals yesterday, some of you got a deluge. We uh, in Jamestown here, one, 1.19 inches was the official rainfall total here in town yesterday. DeWittville, 1.15. Gary, almost an inch. Also in Mayville and Faulkner and Kennedy, more than a half an inch. So that was some well-needed rain on Sunday or on Monday. But now we have a day to dry out here. Thursday is the fall equinox. We officially start fall. So again, this is the same graphic we show every year. But it's nice to bring it back to kind of remind you what the fall equinox actually is. So the fall equinox has to do with how the sun's rays are pointing at the earth. So the sun's rays are directly at the equator. So it means equal day and night. It's not exactly 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of nighttime, but it's very close across the entire globe. And that's what equinox means in Latin. And we are going to see less daylight from here on out until the winter solstice. If that wasn't already obvious by looking outside, the sunset's now coming up closer to seven o'clock. Uh, Hurricane Fiona still churning down here in the Caribbean and is now moving into the Atlantic. It's now a major category three with winds of 115 miles per hour, wind gusts of 140. You can see that well-defined eyewall structure right there. It's passing to the east of the Bahamas, but the good news here is that this is going to take a sharp northward turn and then out into the Atlantic. So there'll be no threat to the continental United States from Fiona. It will likely strengthen into at least a category four before it ultimately goes whoop way out to sea and then into uh, and then way up into Canada. So uh, for uh, the local weather here, we are going to be talking about a severe weather potential for tomorrow. The storm prediction maintains this slight risk, a level two out of five across the entire region. And this is for Wednesday afternoon. We're going to be dealing with a line of showers and thunderstorms moving on through, and they could be punchy. The main threats here is going to be strong damaging winds. That's going to be a given, I think, with this particular type of setup. There could be a touch of large hail, maybe some localized flooding. The tornado threat is relatively low, but it's not zero. So you know what we say when it comes to thunderstorms, expect the unexpected. The overall timing is about three o'clock tomorrow afternoon to about seven o'clock tomorrow evening. That's the main time frame for some of the strongest activity. So let's show it to you on the high res future scan. So we are going to see clouds and sunshine through the afternoon hours today, partly to mostly sunny. We'll go partly to mainly clear through the overnight hours tonight. Then by tomorrow morning, we're going to see a few clouds thickening up by the morning hours. Now we have to watch this, these showers and thunderstorms by tomorrow morning. This could muddle things for the afternoon. We've seen this before, so we have to kind of watch this. This could ultimately stabilize the air a little bit, but the one thing that's going to be working against that is look at that. The clouds clear out. We go into sunshine, and we often talk about this on severe weather days, how sunshine's not a good thing. The sunshine heats the atmosphere, which creates juice for the thunderstorms, so we really want cloud cover to keep those temperatures down, but notice this uh, model sparks that line of showers and thunderstorms by about four o'clock, so don't take the model data to the exact hour, but it's giving you the idea of exactly when the showers and thunderstorms are going to move on through. They're ultimately going to move on through the southern tier through the, uh, uh, through the afternoon and through the evening. They taper off, but we're still going to be left with a few showers for Thursday. Now, this is storm potential. This is a product we have on FutureScan that tries to show you where the better chance for thunderstorm development is using what's called CAPE, Convectively Available Potential Energy. It's a very technical, complex term, but it basically has to do with atmospheric instability. So where you're seeing the yellows and the oranges, that indicates the better chance for thunderstorm development. So we are going to have more than enough juice in the atmosphere tomorrow afternoon to make those thunderstorms flare. So you know the deal. Make sure you have a way of getting watches and warnings through the afternoon. And of course, we'll be here keeping our eyes on those storms tomorrow afternoon. But for today, partly to mostly sunny, a tad bit warmer, just only by one or two degrees. Overall pleasant, 70 to 76 with a northwest wind. Partly to mainly clear tonight, a few clouds roll in by the morning hours, 53 to 62 with a light wind. The ultimate satellite solution, seven day. So again, we highlight Wednesday in red because of the severe thunderstorms in the afternoon. We're up to 80. But look at the cold front drops us to 52 by Thursday morning, only 59 here in the city for uh, the first day of fall. Boy, fall is here. Is it ever on Friday 56? Look at the overnight low on Friday by Saturday morning. We could deal with some frost in the inland valleys by Saturday morning. We're going to stay in the 60s on Saturday and Sunday, bring a few rain showers into the area. Then I think a better coverage of the showers on Monday with temperatures still hanging out in the lower 60s.